So thank you for, for coming today. My name is Chris Rissell. I'm the director of the uh, New South Wales Office of Preventive Health and uh, professor of public health at the University of Sydney. Um, the Office of Preventive Health uh, is uh, the unit in New South Wales Health which is responsible for Im implementing statewide programs for childhood and adult overweight and obesity prevention. So today is uh, very much a, a core focus for me in terms of our focus on physical activity and indeed all the exciting things that are happening um, in other parts of the world. The focus of today's forum is around local communities and getting them to move more, but also an interagency response to how we can do that better. Before we officially start the proceedings, I'd like to invite Uncle Chika Madden to, um, to the stage to um, give us the welcome to country. Good, uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, folks. My name is Charles Madden, but known around me in the city as Chika. Uh, that's a nickname that I had. I got many, many years ago going to Redburn Public School, which is now NCIE, the National Centre for Indigenous Excellence. Folks, I'm from Gadigal land, Aboriginal land. That's the land we're on at the moment. For many, many years, I've been involved with different Aboriginal organisations in and around the city. I've been a director with the Aboriginal Medical Service at Redburn for over 40 years, also a director with the Redfern Aboriginal Housing Company, Aboriginal Hostels Australia and the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, where I am still a very active member. I've got to mention it folks, a life member of the Redfern or Blacks Rugby League Football Club. <laughs> folks, I'm from Gattaca land. I'd like to take this opportunity this morning to extend a warm and sincere welcome to any of my Aboriginal brothers and sisters, non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters, who may have travelled here onto Gadigal land. If we have any brothers and sisters from the Torres Strait or further afar across the seas, welcome. Welcome to Gadigal land. The Gadigal clan is one of 29 that makes up the Eora Nation. The Eora Nation is bordered by three distinctive landmarks. We have the Hawkesbury River to the north, and the Fiend to the west, and the Georges River to the south. Those three rivers form the boundaries of the Eora Nation. Folks, if you've travelled across this great city of ours this morning, a state or this great country, welcome. Welcome to Gadigal land. Enjoy your stay. Have a safe and trouble-free trip home. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Enjoy the morning. All right. Great. Thanks very much, Uncle Chica. And I'd also like to acknowledge our, our Honourable Gillian Skinner, Minister for Health, who has been a very uh, strong supporter of, um, of preventive health and, in fact, <laughs> helped establish the Office of Preventive Health. So uh, I'm deeply appreciative of that. <laughs> Um, if we are uh, wanting to tw tweet, uh, we do have um, hashtag FitNewSouthWales2016 and there's the, uh, the handoff at PCAL as well. Now we've got a bit of a, a, a diverse group in the audience today uh, as fits uh, an interagency focus for this meeting. I know we've got all sorts of people um, from health. Maybe a show of hands, give people an idea of the weight of numbers here. So quite a, quite a few people from health. Um, transport? Okay, a fewer number, but still a, a range of people. Um, architects and urban designers, urban planning. Okay, okay, so more than transport. That's interesting. Um, and but of course, we we cross over in, in um, into government and non-government sectors too. So who's in the non-government sector? Okay, so quite a number of people there too, and government government people. Okay. Quite a range of people there too. Great, thank you. Um, now, if you haven't already noticed, you, are, you, you probably would have sat on it, but there is a, a, a pack uh, from PCAL, which also gives you a bit of a summary of uh, some of the achievements since last year, because at the end of last year, we set ourselves a number of objectives that we thought we might try and achieve. And so on the back of it, there's a, there's a list. And in fact, I think we can confidently say we've, we've, we've in fact done many of those things. We've certainly uh, worked with the Department of Planning to prepare healthy planning guidelines. Can every, everyone can see that. Uh, there's been a lot of support for local councils to sign the Walk 21 International Charter for Walking. 
There's been lots of work on the integrated planning and reporting resources that, uh, to support councils and local government in, in making better changes for health, um, local government case studies, developing healthy eating messages. Lots of things have been going on, so I'm really pleased to be able to say that. So including sort of multiple mayors signing the charter. And I think it's interesting that the PCAR resources have just grown and grown, and they've been an incredible support for local government and other people working in this space. And I think it actually is 10 years since PCAL was founded. And that makes PCAL the one of the longest running inter-aging agency active living councils in the world. Um, so achievement to PCAL. Okay, so how today's going to run, you've got an agenda in your pack, um, so I won't go through it in all the detail, but um, we'll have an invitation, a, a welcome to the, to the day by, by the Minister for Health, followed by our keynote speaker, Shelley Fole, who's from um, the US, where she's the Executive Director of President Obama's Council on Fitness, Sports and Nutrition. And I'm really looking forward to hearing how things have been going in the States. I think that's a, been a real draw card for today. And then we'll have about half an hour for questions. There will be no panel. So if you have questions, the time to ask them is after the presentation. After morning tea, we'll have um, Claire Gardner-Barnes from Transport from New South Wales. will give us a bit of an overview on what's going on in active travel initiatives in New South Wales. We'll hear from the newly appointed Chief Commissioner of the Greater Sydney Commission, uh, Lucy Turnbull, who will give us an outline of what they're um, proposing to do. Pretty exciting stuff there too for, for planning. Melissa Gibbs from the Office of Local Government will highlight how local councils can engage with the integrated planning and reporting updates, um, and that's important. And then we'll have a couple of ex uh, case studies from, the, from Western Sydney, Wesrock, and the local health district um, about how they've supported Walk 21. So based on, and luck, if you've been lucky enough to get in early, there is actually a, a walk shop, not a workshop, a walk shop down around the new um, development at Barangaroo. And if you haven't been down there, it's actually fantastic space, lovely parkland by the water and it's a really beautiful space. So really interesting to see that. All right, so now to formally uh, commence proceedings, I would like to invite the Minister for Health, Gillian Skinner, to um, open the meeting. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Uh, may I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land upon which we meet and pay my respect to Elders past and present and thank you, Uncle Chica, for your very warm welcome as always. I also want to welcome uh, Shelley Fole, the Executive Director of President Obama's Council on Fitness and Sport and Nutrition. I'm really thrilled to have you here, Shelley. Um, I've, I've just mentioned to her that we've only just met, but by the end of this day we'll be like close relatives. We have so many meetings and I'm very interested in hearing uh, what you're, uh, what's going on in the United States, although I can't stay beyond my opening address here today. I also want to acknowledge and thank all of you for being here. Uh, I'm glad, Chris, invited you to indicate where you came from. I think it's very exciting that there are people from so many different um, aspects of life, whether it's transport, planning, architects, etc., uh, because it's not just something that's a health issue. It's something that, it, that confronts all of us and that will take all of us to uh, really make a difference. So I'm really pleased to be here to welcome you to Fit New South Wales 2016. Uh, this is a, a showcase that will showcase local and international cross-agency strategies which are designed to address the critical question of our time. How do we get more people to eat well and move more? Um, in case any of you watched me struggling up the stairs there, I had um, foot surgery four weeks ago tomorrow. Um, I hope there are no doc orthopaedic surgeons in the room because I'm not supposed to be standing. Um, although when I saw the doctor on Friday, he said, are you doing exceptionally well? But I can tell when you've been cheating. So, um, but I, I re reckon one of the reasons why I have recovered as well as I have is because I, of my state of fitness. You know, if you keep yourself strong fit, um, then when something like that happens, you're able to recover much more quickly. So I'm really pleased to see that today's conference has a particular focus on reducing childhood obesity. Um, in New South Wales, more than one in five school-aged children are overweight or obese, and I find that shocking. Um, while uh, New South Wales health data indicates that overweight and obesity in children has stabilised and may be showing early signs of improvement, current rates are still a pressing problem for our future. 
Um, I was very pleased when our Premier, Mike Baird, um, identified reducing overweight and obesity in children uh, as a personal priority. Um, he, was, he did so with uh, a considerable urging from the Minister for Health. Um, he said that, and he, but it didn't take much persuading. Uh, he said a target to reduce childhood overweight and obesity by 5% over the next 10 years. Achieving this reduction, we will see at least 62,000 fewer children being overweight or obese by the year 2025. Overweight or obese children are more likely to become overweight or obese adults, as I'm sure all of the health experts in the room will know, which of course places them at increased risk of many different problems, uh, developing chronic diseases later in life. Um, each year, overweight and obesity causes the New South Wales government, it costs the New South Wales government $19 million. I know our Premier's priority is not an easy task. Um, childhood obesity is a very complex issue, which is why we're adopting a whole of government approach to make it easier for children and for their families to be healthy and active. So it is a whole government response, which is why I'm so thrilled to see so many people from different walks of, of um, life here today. <clears throat> the New South Wales Healthy Eating and Living and Active Living Strategy is our whole of government strategy to address healthy eating and active, um, active living in New South Wales. It la lays the foundation for people to make healthy choices. It encourages integrated and health-focused initiatives in planning, environment and transport. And we have made a strategic coordinated investment across agencies and section and sectors to change environmental and to uh, situations and to support individuals to achieve and maintain a, a healthy weight um, throughout life. Prevention is the key, which is why um, in the, um, we, we've set up this whole um, Office of Preventive Health under Professor Chris Bristle, to whom I'm eternally grateful for the work that he's doing in leading the team um, out there at Liverpool. New South Wales Health invests uh, $9.4 million annually to implement education and activity programs in our schools and our wider community. This is for just for children. There's a much a larger fun, um, amount addressed across the whole range of initiatives. As I said, we established the Office of Preventive Health in 2012, um, and it really was to help coordinate a statewide preventive health program. My role for the office was to um, offer evidence-based programs to help families maintain and improve their health. Um, New South Wales is now leading with programs that promote healthy eating and active living as a normal part of everyday life. Programs under the New South Wales Healthy Children Initiative address childhood overweight and obesity across different ages and settings. The flagships, flagship programs, and I know a number of you will know about them, are Munch and Move, which is for children in early childhood services. 80% of uh, New South Wales centred based Early childhood education and care services have been trained in the munch and move philosophy of healthy eating and physical activity and reducing screen time. Uh, Life, Live Life Well at School is another program for children in primary schools and more than 3,000 primary schools across the public, independent and Catholic, health sec uh, Catholic sectors have adopted the Live Life Well at School program. Um, Go for Fun is an out-of-school um, uh, hours program uh, for children aged 7 to 13 who are above a healthy weight and participants on average achieve a very commendable increase in physical activity of 3.6 hours a week through the program. The Go for Fun program has already helped more than 6,800 uh, children and their families because it's not just about teaching the children about this new way of living but now teaching their families so it's sustained beyond involvement in the immediate program. And we're working on a new post-program support module to sustain the increase in physical activity and the increase in 
uh, sec, uh, sedentary, the decrease in sedentary time of participants and their families. Um, spreading our reach wider, um, I last year launched the New South Wales major new health campaign, Make Healthy Normal. Make Healthy Normal is an innovative social marketing campaign to motivate people to reassess their lifestyle and to create new healthy normal choices. Making Healthy Normal reminds people that small changes can make a big difference to an individual's health. It quite simply encourages people to choose smaller portions and less cooler jewels, to eat more fruit and veg, to be active every day, to make water a drink of choice and to sit less and move more. And if you like my office, you now have desks that not only sit but stand. I stand every now and then, not as often as I should, but I promise my commitment today will be to do it more often. <clears throat> Given our new focus on childhood obesity, our Make Healthy Normal campaign is increasing its focus on families uh, with children and young people. The campaign is spread across television, print and digital media and utilises support from website, social media and community engagement activities to spread the message. Uh, preliminary feedback shows us the message is being embraced by the community with more than 200,000 visits to the website. I'm proud of the work that's being done across agencies in this state to address lifestyle issues and to continue um, to contribute to um, reducing overweight and obesity. I look forward to hearing uh, of what's being achieved into the future and particularly um, to learning from um, Kelly Fowle what's happening in America um, and also to um, uh, meet with the Premier and, uh, one of, at one of our successful Live Well at Schools programs later in the day. So thank you to the organisers of today's Fit New South Wales. I'm sure you will all find it a very rewarding event and it, takes me, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to officially declare it open. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. And, and uh, I must say, you know, New South Wales has fared extremely well in terms of preventive health, um, due in, to a large extent to the Minister's support for prevention and population health in New South Wales. So I think uh, we've done very well there.